Brett Youngerman. Uh, I'm a neurosurgeon uh, at Columbia in the Comprehensive Epilepsy Center, which is part of Columbia University and New York Presbyterian Hospital. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about epilepsy and, in particular, advances in minimally invasive surgery uh, for drug-resistant epilepsy. I'll try to talk for about 30 minutes or so and then leave some time to go over specific questions. Uh, we're going to cover a lot of different topics. Not all of this is going to be for absolutely everyone. Uh, you really do need a one-to-one -one, uh, visit uh, with a physician uh, to get the medical advice and personalize this conversation uh, to you or your family member. Uh, but this is meant to be a little bit of an introduction to some of the latest technology uh, in our field. Uh, so first of all, just some definitions so that we're all on the same page. Uh, what is a seizure? Well, it's a burst of uncontrolled electrical activity in the brain, and it can cause a host of different temporary abnormalities depending on where in the brain it's coming from. So this can be anything from the muscle uh, movements that you might be used to seeing or thinking about with seizures, which are the convulsions and shaking, uh, but it could also cause all kinds of abnormal sensations, uh, changes in behavior and changes in awareness. And epilepsy is a disease of repeated seizures during everyday life, so at least two seizures that are over a day apart. Uh, this affects more than 3 million people in the United States, uh, and there are a number of different causes. Uh, you can be born with epilepsy. Uh, this can happen from uh, abnormal development, uh, from genetics, uh, from a brain injury before or during birth. Uh, or it can be developed uh, later on from a brain injury, from things like head trauma, a tumor, an infection, a stroke, or a brain bleed. And, and then in many cases, we unfortunately still don't know exactly uh, what is causing uh, epilepsy, and we use this term idiopathic uh, to describe that. So what are the risks of uncontrolled seizures? Uh, most people are familiar with the injuries that can happen with epilepsy uh, from a fall uh, st or striking your head when you fall. Uh, but there's also really a decreased quality of life uh, that may be familiar to you uh, if you or a family member are suffering uh, from epilepsy. Uh, there's just many things that you can't do on your own uh, if you might suddenly lose awareness, uh, things like uh, simply holding a cup of coffee uh, could be dangerous or uh, in the worst case scenario uh, or embarrassing at best. Um, driving a car, which can limit you from getting to work. Uh, child care can be a challenge to do on your own. Uh, working around the house or certain jobs, uh, climbing or operating a machine and swimming. All these things can be off limit, which can really impair your ability to work and just have the social life that you want to have. The other thing a lot of people don't realize about epilepsy is that it is a brain disease. So in addition to this decreased quality of life, it also has direct effects on the brain that can lead to cognitive decline and depression. Uh, and there's something called sudden unexplained death in epilepsy, which is also not fully understand, but is a very scary phenomenon uh, where we can have sudden death uh, due, due to epilepsy. Fortunately, most of epilepsy uh, can be prevented with medications. So in about two thirds of, of patients, uh, the medications do control the seizures. Uh, but if two medications fail, uh, the likelihood that the third drug is gonna be successful or many more drug trials are gonna be successful is unfortunately only about 4% or four in 100. Uh, so even though many patients will go on for, for years and years and, and try many different drugs, uh, if those first two don't work, well, we know that uh, success, unfortunately, with additional medications is unlikely. Uh, and that has led the epilepsy community to come up with a definition of drug-resistant epilepsy, uh, and which is essentially failure of two seizure medications to lead to seizure freedom. And unfortunately, one in three people with epilepsy uh, will be drug-resistant. And we've known this uh, since going back to some important studies that were done uh, in the year 2000 and many studies since then. Uh, and unfortunately, despite new medications over the years, uh, this hasn't really changed significantly. So the expert consensus recommendation from all the different organizations within medicine uh, that are related to epilepsy, uh, both in the United States and internationally, is that if seizures are not fully controlled uh, after two drugs, or we say one year as well, uh, a patient should be referred to a specialized center for comprehensive evaluation, which includes, but is not limited to, uh, pre-surgical evaluation. 
So what is a, a comprehensive epilepsy center? Uh, in the U.S., the National Association of Epilepsy Centers uh, actually accredits uh, these organizations as level three or four centers. Uh, Columbia is a level four uh, center, which is the highest level. Uh, what this means is, is that there's a team approach to the diagnosis and treatment of epilepsy. So it's not just your one doctor who's treating you for your epilep epilepsy, uh, but a whole team that includes the epileptologist, which is an epilepsy doctor, a neurologist that specializes in the treatment of epilepsy, uh, a neurosurgeon who specializes in the treatment of epilepsy, neuropsychologists, and then a whole team of nurses, EEG technologists, social workers who are all familiar with epilepsy and, and work together to provide comprehensive care. And there's also specific requirements in terms of being able to offer specialized equipment, tests, and surgeries uh, that lead to the accreditation uh, from the National Association of Epilepsy Centers. So what is a comprehensive evaluation for? We're talking about surgery today, but comprehensive evaluation is not just about surgery. Uh, so a comprehensive evaluation can be used to diagnose underlying causes or epilepsy syndromes. It can also confirm that those medication trials that you may or may not have already had have been adequate and appropriately chosen. And if not, then different medications can be tried. Uh, it can diagnose related cognitive or psychiatric disorders that go hand in hand oftentimes with epilepsy, and those can then be treated appropriately. And then there is pre-surgical evaluation, which is what we're focusing on uh, today. 